And in this video, we want to do Angular JS form validation. Now, to do this properly, we need to switch off the HTML5 form validation. So we're going to do that by going into the form element, and we're going to type no validate is equal to no validate. So this tells the browser not to trigger any HTML5 browser-based validation. So if I go back to the form and hit register, you can see the validation didn't kick in and actually this on submit function got called. So what I'm gonna show you now is that if you give a form a name, I'm gonna give our form the name the form, what this does is when AngularJS sees that, it will attach a variable with the same name to the scope, which you can inspect with details about the form. So if you remember, we have this little pre-tag at the bottom. I'm gonna change that to the form. And I'm just gonna refresh the page. Okay, whoa, a lot of data. So you can see that there's a lot of data here. It's printing out a lot of details about the form. The important one here is you want to see that it's got some, the valid flag is set to false, so it's invalid. It's not been submitted. And pristine is true means that it hasn't been touched by the user in any way. So although this tells us that the form is invalid, it's not valid right now because the email address, if you remember, is required. It doesn't tell us anything about the form fields themselves. Which ones are invalid, what errors, which validations are they failing? So to add that, what we need to do is we need to go back into the form. We'll go back up to our form field. We're just focusing on the email field right now. And we need to give it a name. I wanna give it a name of email. So as soon as you do that, so go back into here, let's refresh the page. You can see at the bottom now, there's another attribute to the form variable, which is email. And the email has a number of attributes as well. Valid is false, which means it's an invalid field at the moment, it is required. And the error tells us which of the validators are currently failing. So the required validator is currently failing. So it has a required error message. But this doesn't help us because even if we hit register right now, the on submit function is still getting called. So what we can do is let's go back up to the on submit function. I'm going to pass it the variable the form dot valid. So if you remember, that's that's true if the form is valid. And then let's go back into the on submit function. We are now getting passed a parameter of valid. And I'm gonna say, if valid, then this whole block. I've commented out the post for now just to make things a bit simpler. And if it's invalid, I'm going to print out invalid form here. Okay, so if we go back to here, the main form, if I hit register, invalid form gets printed out. So we're not gonna submit, we're not gonna perform any HTTP requests because the form is invalid. So how do we start showing the end users some nice renderings of invalid form fields and perhaps some error messages? Now to do this, we're gonna introduce you to a new directive. Let me get back to the HTML file. Let's get back to the email field. And the directive I'm gonna introduce you to is called ng class. Now ng class takes as input an object. Let me write one out to begin with. So what this does is if the value is true, it will add this, the key, to the class associated with the ng class. Now seeing we are using Twitter Bootstrap, if Twitter Bootstrap, the form group that wraps a label and an input, if it has a has error, 
it will render it with a nice red outline. So let's just see how that works. So now you can see that the email field and label has the has error class associated with it. And then Twitter bootstrap renders this as red. So let's go back to here. Now that's not really that useful. We don't want to always show it red. But let's do, let me just show you underneath all of this some useful variables which we're going to use to render the form in a way that we want. So the first thing we're going to show you is if you remember we had the email and valid. So I'm going to go field valid. There we go. So let's refresh that page. So the field valid is false. And now it's true. So we're going to use this field as the value for the ng class. So it shows the right coloring. So let me add that there. So for has error, we want not valid. Okay. And then we want to show has success, which is another bootstrap class, which will show a green outline if it's valid. If it's not valid, it will show has error. If it's valid, it will show has success. So let's go back into the form. Let's do asim at asim.com. And there you go. You see it's turned green. But it's not really that great still because when we show the form for the first time, it is still invalid. So it shows it with a red border and red coloring. We only really want to show the red error if the user has had a chance to change the data. So what we're going to use then is another attribute of the form, not the form field, but the form itself, which is pristine. Let me just show you what this is. So form and the attribute is pristine. There we go. So let me refresh the page. So you can see form pristine is true. As soon as I add a variable, as soon as I touch the form in any way, it becomes false. Even if I delete the variable, it's still false. So let's add that to the ng class to make this just a little bit more user friendly. So what I want to do is I only want to show the has error. If the form is not valid and the form is not pristine, as in it's already been touched by the user in some way. So let's refresh the page. There you go. You can see it's nice. Hasn't been rendered in any sp specific way. But as soon as the field is invalid and the form is not pristine, it shows an error message. But as soon as the email field is valid and the form isn't pristine, it shows green. So colors are good, but we also want to show the user a more detailed error message so that they know why the field is red. For email, it could be red either because they haven't entered a value or because they haven't entered a valid email address. So to see how to do this, we are now going to look at another attribute of the email parameter of the form, which is called error. And I'm just going to put this through the filter of JSON. Okay. So what this is saying is that the form field is not valid. And it's not valid because it's required and the required error is active It's true. So if I add an A in, so that's telling us that the form field is still invalid. And the reason it's invalid is because the email validation is failing and therefore that's true. So if I add an proper email in, so you see the validation has gone. So we can use these variables with another directive to called ng show to show a nice pretty error message to the end user. So let me show you how. So again, with Twitter bootstrap, you can add an element underneath it with help block. And this is specifically designed for showing these kind of errors to the end user. So what we're going to use, as I said, is a new directive called ng show. 
I'm going to make this ng show equivalent to the required flag. If this is true, whatever you assign to ng show, if it's true, then it will show this block. If it's false, it will hide this block. In CSS terms, it assigns a display of none to this block if ng show is false. The equal and opposite to it is ng hide, which just does the same but the opposite way around. But we're just going to use ng show. So what this means is this email field is having a required error. So what we can show underneath is just a piece of text saying this field is required. And additionally, we can show another one underneath it for when it has the email error. And we can say, please enter an email with at least an at symbol. So here we go. Let's go back to the form. Oh, we missed something out. So it's showing this field is required. And we don't want that right now because we want only want to show that when users had a chance to to enter some data so I'm going to add the and not the form is pristine okay same as what we did for the ng class let's refresh okay now no error messages no styling if I add a there you go so please enter an email at least that symbol so I'm going to add the at symbol so that's the email address and if I delete it it's going to say this field is required. But we're still missing kind of one important thing. So if I refresh this page, get back to the blank state, and then I try and register, you can see it is printing out in valid form, but it's no good because it's not showing the end user the feedback as to why this form is invalid. So we want to show all those nice little error conditions when we try to submit the form as well. So for that, we're going to start looking at another form variable, which is called submitted. So again, it's another uh, dollar bound variable. So let's have a look there. And then form submitted is false. If we register, it becomes true. So let's add that to all of those classes and ng show rules that we had already. Now we want to do this is if not the form is pristine or the form dot submitted. So it will show has error if the form field is invalid and either the user has entered some data or the user has tried to submit the form. So let's add that same rule to the rest of the classes and let's add it again to the ng show block here and here. Let's clean this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna get rid of these as well. Just comment them out for now, just to clean it up. So here we go. If I try and register, there we go. You're not gonna actually submit the form. We're gonna have the error message displayed. And then if I type the wrong email, we're going to have the other error message display to so the user knows how to fix it. I'm going to fix it. And then I'm going to hit register. And there you go, I've submitted the form. Now I'm not going to go through and do exactly the same for all the name, username, age, sex, password, I'll leave that as an exercise for you. But you can see that there's quite a lot of code to write for having form validation, you can add a lot of really good dynamic feedback for the end user, but there is quite a lot of code to write. 